What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of the Ricky Jones Julia podcast, aka your favorite Christian podcast. Hey, and this is me, yours truly, Ricky Jones Jr., here again for another episode. And so, as you all saw, the title of this is all about hearing from God, how to hear the voice of God, if you can hear the voice of God. And oh man, is that really God? Are usually like around the same sentiments around people's thoughts, per- around like hearing from God, largely because. I don't know. Uh, it's been something. I've grown up in the church my whole life, truth be told, and I still am in the church, and I still forever will be in the church because I believe in what it's all about and the community that you get with it, as well as just being around people that are like you, right? Um, I just think there's so much that goes into it. However, growing up in the church, I grew up with the thought, not truth be told, I grew up with the thought that the preacher or the pastor could hear from God a little bit more clear and maybe sometimes a little bit more better than those that are sitting out in the congregation, right? Back then it was called congregation. Right now it's called audience or in the crowd, right? Depending on whatever church you go to, you may hear it called or name whatever it is that I have already said. But nonetheless, in it all, I just thought that's what it was. And so I thought in order to aspire to hear from God more clearly, I needed to either be a pastor or I need to be close relationship with a pastor, right? It just so happened that my dad is a preacher and was a pastor, right? So I I was around them and I started like talking to them and like trying to figure out like, man, how did you know it was God or how did you know that's what you heard, yada, yada, yada. And I found out that that sometimes, in some cases, not 100% of them, but some of them are just really figuring it out. Or in other words, like they believe they heard from God, so they acted on what they believed and or they believe they heard this certain thing that God has said. And so they acted on it. So I started thinking to myself, like, wait a minute, like y'all, y'all, some of y'all going off of like beliefs or like not even 100 percent like, you know, confidence like y'all going off of maybes like. Y'all speaking with such authority off of a maybe? And so I started, like, trying to figure this thing out. Like, make it make sense. Like, I love math. So I love, like, one plus one equals two. And so, like, when certain things just don't add up the way I want them to, I get to thinking in my thinking cap, right? Um, But in it all, with it all, I really boiled it down. I really came to the conclusion that our relationship with God is the most powerful thing, the most monumental thing, the most necessary thing that is for us in order for us to hear from God. We can't desire or want to or believe that we are hearing from someone that we don't have a relationship with, right? That's just plain and simple, especially with somebody that we can't see. <laughs> we don't know where they are, right, in the physical. And at the same time, we're like, okay, we're talking to them, but we believe that they're talking to us. However, we're not sure whether or not they're talking to us. But no, we, we have to have a relationship just even as is if you are in a relationship, right, with somebody here in the world, right? I'm in a relationship with my wife, and that's what it is. I'm in a relationship with my kids as well. And um, so, with that being said, just to my kids, right? I know when my son is crying. I know when my daughter is crying. I know in a room filled of kids, if somebody, if one of them says daddy, I know when it's my daughter or I know if it's my son. Why? Because the relationship that we've had in one case in six years and another case and what's coming up to four years of a relationship that we've had together. And so based off of that, we have a strong tie to the sense where I know their voice. Right. And there's even a scripture that says my sheep, they know my voice and the voice of a stranger. They will not follow. And the key part to that scripture is it says my sheep. Right. In order to be the sheep of God, you have to be one in relationship with God. And of course, you can be in relationship and believing with God. Boom, you have salvation. But then that relationship is strengthened as you all spend more time together. Well, Ricky, how do I spend time with God? How do I strengthen that relationship? I'm also glad that you asked. You know what I'm saying? Like I asked and answered the questions that I asked myself or I asked during the time in which I was trying to get the understanding. And so in the midst of that, I was like, okay, how do I strengthen my relationship? Well, one of the beautiful ways in which you can do so is reading the Bible, right? Reading the Bible, you're able to experience, know, come in contact with the words, the thoughts, the mind of God. 
It's written from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Don't look at each book within the Bible as its own like book written by a specific person for a specific time. Like, no, they were all God inspired. And so if you have the understanding and mindset that all scripture is God inspired, meaning that God inspired the writer of the books to write what is written. Therefore, you know that it comes from God used and written by man for others to read. If you have that mindset, you're able to then read what is being or what has been uh written what is being read as something that oh man this is what god said like god would say this today you know what i'm saying um to the corinthians god would say this today to the f people of uh philippi and you know ephesus and list goes on but reading it in a way that you're realizing that oh man these are actually god words you're able to then understand and realize and recognize the character of god the nature of god the mindset of of God and with those tools with those abilities you're then able to filter 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 out and filter through what you believe God is saying to you as you're working on a maybe and I say that because not all of us get to hear what God has to say in true and clear and abundant sentences right most often we want to hear God like the way you're hearing me and most often I'm just here to let you know the truth of the matter most often you won't hear God so clearly as you are hearing me in full and abundant sentences of the past the present and the future there are sometimes where you may get a word from God. There may be some times you may get a phrase from God and there may be some times where you get sentences from God. But whatever it is that you do hear from God, I want you to know that the strongest way to be able to walk and move and to breathe with confidence of what God has said because of your relationship with God, the experiences that you have had. Yes, reading your Bible is a way of growing your relationship and two, another way is prayer. Prayer is a way that you get to speak to God. And the beautiful thing about prayer is that the Bible lets us know that when we pray that we can expect to receive the answer or the request can be made known to God, right, through prayer. But we can expect to receive a response from God. And, you know, that flows how that flows, right? There's a scripture that says those who ask shall receive. Those who seek will find. Those who knock, the doors will be open to them. And I say all that to say those are inspirational scriptures to us. It lets us know that, okay, it's cool for me to ask. Why? Because I will receive. I will receive an answer. It doesn't say that you will receive an answer tomorrow, which oftentimes a lot of people desire. And when they don't get it so quickly and a response so like, you know, immediately then they just fall um, victim of, oh man, like God is not speaking to me. God doesn't care about me. God doesn't hear me. God doesn't have the response for me. Like, no, you may not get the answer the next day. I'm not saying that every time that I pray or every time other people pray, that they get an answer immediately, whether it's same day or next day. No, it's not like Amazon Prime. Like it just doesn't happen like that. Sometimes it may take a week and the list goes on, right? I'm not going to put a time frame on when God will respond to you, but I'm saying what I'm saying to say that God will respond. The Bible lets us know those who ask, it shall be given. Those who seek, they shall find. Those who knock the door will be open unto them. And so I say that to say, go for it, right? So we have what well, reading the Bible as a way to strengthen our relationship with God. Praying is another way of uh, strengthening our relationship with God. Of course, Listening to worship music, worshiping God is a way to strengthen our relationship with God because in worshiping, it allows for us to open up ourselves to a true and living God in a way in which we're not asking for things. We're just giving reverence. We're giving uh, ourselves a reminder of, of the vastness of who God is, the love that God shows, the ways that God has made, and the opportunities that have been afforded to us because of the goodness of God. And the list goes on, right? There's worship songs that speaks to how great and mighty God is, or the love that never fails that we receive from God, or his grace and mercy that surrounds us. And the list goes on, right? There's also many worship and great worship songs out there and i would venture to say the ones that are in worship through the word of god are the best worship songs why because it's like putting the two together you're putting the word with worship and what a powerful dynamic that you're getting so there are some great worship leaders out there i don't want to start calling my name because i don't want to miss anybody right um but 
Worship is another way. Journaling is another way. I talked about it in a previous video of how powerful journaling is in which, you know, even with the journal that I put out on um, Amazon, what is he to you today? That was a journal that I was doing with God that allowed for me to realize that, man, God is not just a way. God is just not one way, but God is the totality of the ways in which I need him each and every day. And out of the totality of those ways, he's speaking to me. He's talking to me. He's hearing and responding to me not only do and can i let my request made known but he's also making requests of myself each and every day and there's also things that he's wanting me to do each and every day and there's also scriptures that i can stand on each and every day um that he will then talk to me through right so uh in essence that is what the uh, journal is about and the exercises that you do each and every day but I say all that to say journaling is a way. It gives you a way to just eliminate distractions, right? Because our lives are full of so many distractions. Television, the phone, social media, text messages, phones, calls, uh, the news, newspapers, uh, magazines, unnecessary books, right? Video games. And the list goes on because there's so many distractions that come about our way. However, when we journal, when we put our phones on do not disturb when we set aside 30 minutes 15 minutes an hour 45 minutes around the time to journal we're able to then focus our attention on what we are writing and we're able to just the you know lower stress decrease stress and just able to relax write hear from god write down what we believe god is saying from us or to us and then able to recall the things of which god has said and journaling is just a beautiful way because also it allows for you to grow in your relationship and hearing from God. You're able to then look at, let's say you start the first of the month. By the 30th of that month, you're able to look back to see how you've been progressing in hearing from God. You may start off with God said two sentences and then you may by the end of the 30 days or in 30 days look at you've written a whole paragraph because you've just been writing down what you believe you've been hearing. And if it lines up, here's a, a fun test to see whether or not what you have written is in line with what God would have said is you can always test it with scripture is what you have written something that would be said in scripture or something that has been said in scripture because we get to use the Bible as a anchor, a source, a way to see ourselves through God or God's words through us. And so. You know, it's a beautiful thing, right? So journaling. So what did I say so far? I said, um, you know, reading the Bible. Um, forgot the second one, right? But I knew worship was one. Um, prayer. Prayer was the second one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we have reading the Bible. We have prayer. We have worship. We have journaling. And then two, it could be, or I won't say, you know. I'm not giving like totality of all of them, but number five, it's in listening to messages. I know when I, and this is things that I've used as sources of hearing from God. When I listen to like messages that preachers are teaching and things like that, I get to hear God in another way, another perspective from them. But then also as they are talking, God is also talking to me. And it's like a beautiful exchange that's being taken place. I get to receive what the preacher is saying, but then I get to get those like aha moments of God. God speaking to me and it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful experience. And it's just like, ah, oh, when you know, you know, right? Sometimes it can lead to tears. Sometimes it can lead to thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it can lead to, oh, wow, that's good. And the list goes on to the responses that may come about. However, those things takes place during those times, which is, again, is why I love just being in the building sometimes, you know, cool to stream services and things like that. But it's nothing like being in the building. Honestly, when I'm at home streaming, never have I just streamed and just locked in doing that solely. Most often I'm streaming, I'm on the phone sometimes, I'm eating something, and you know when you're eating something, you like looking down, and you know crunching, making noises, and the list goes on. And uh, so it doesn't give you the full capacity or the ability to hear it 100%, so you're missing stuff. And the things that you're missing could actually be the breakthrough that you need to realize and recognize that one, you can hear from God, or two, God is speaking to you about that thing, or three, God told you about something, but you missed it because you're looking down. So again, listening to messages or even number six um 
Having conversations with people, having a conversation with people can open you up to so many things because people's conversations can be and most often will be confirmations to the things that God, if you're talking to the right people, right? Confirmations to the things that God has said. You may have already prayed and you might have heard the response, but you're like, I don't know. I don't know if that's God. Or you might have been journaling. You're like, I don't know. I don't know if that's God. But then in talking with people, those things that you journal, those things that you heard after prayer will then and may come up. And you're like, oh, snap. How you how, how you know to say that? Or wait a wait, wait, wait a minute. How did you know? Like you reading my mail and you read it. You know what I'm saying? You know how people be talking. But they just excited because it's like a boop. That's the answer that I need. I've been in quite a media conversations that I pray to God about a thing. And then in conversations, the answer to that thing has come about. And there's been times where I've stopped them and said, oh, snap, like that's the answer to my prayer. Like, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, people are people, right? Um, some would just keep rolling because that's not what they was there for. They just here to share and they just about to share in life. Some people are like, oh snap, like, oh, it's so great that I was able to be a vessel and the list goes on, right? So that's neither here nor there. The fact is conversation is a way in which you can receive the answers. You can receive what you need from God because God is speaking to you through them as they are speaking to you. So don't just hear to hear what is being said but here knowing that god is always speaking and sharing those things of which we desire to hear right so then number seven number seven is god can speak to us through nature yeah i don't know i don't know when it's the last time you looked at a sunset or you looked at a body of water or you've looked at birds or you looked at the grass or you've looked at insects or you just embraced fresh air outside i try right i don't do it every day but i try to make it a thing that i do to just walk outside why because in walking outside i may look at a cloud i may look into the sun right i don't look at the sun i may be looking in the direction of the sun or just looking at something in nature and god will speak to me during those times largely because everything that we see especially in nature has been and was made by god therefore like god's fingerprint is on it god's ways are on it god's mentality is on it god's way of doing things are on it right the sun has been doing what the sun has been doing since the sun has been put into the sky right that just shows how consistent god is it shows how repetitive god is it shows how loving how much of a forethought god has like the list goes on right you can just get a whole message out of watching the sun or even watching water right especially like if you're somewhere like myself uh, where you get to like go at beaches and things like that like i have a secret place in which um i really just took crystal to my wife maybe uh two weeks ago that i've gone out to several times where i just it's a place where i can look at water and i can pray and talk to god and just Watching the water flow just puts me at a serene and a just a nice peaceful place where I believe that I can hear from God clearly. And at times where like congestion and confusion and so much riffraff and noise is about, that's a place where I'm like, oh snap, like God is here. But anyway, find those areas, find that thing, find what works for you, right? I gave you seven places, seven ways in which God speaks to me. However, you may find your three ways. You may find your six, your 12, your 24 ways that God will speak to you. But whatever it is, if you could, if you would, let us know in the comment section below, largely because it will help others. It'll help others see where and how God has been speaking to them in areas in which they did not think that God would speak to them or ways in which God has been speaking to them that they didn't expect. Therefore, they won't listen in to hear what God was saying to them. And the list goes on. So I saw that to say, great people, hey, you can hear from God. So don't question whether or not God is speaking because God is always speaking. The question is, are you in a posture? Are you in a place or are you in a mindset that you can receive whatever it is God has for you? And hey, being in those places in which maybe I was in, in which God was speaking, or finding your specific place and letting us know where that is, hey, it'll help others be able to do the same because we don't want to be a withholder of the good things, you know what I'm saying? And hearing from God is a good thing. It's a good thing that you should share with some other good people so they can experience that good thing too. And so, with that being said, great people, I love you all. I appreciate you all. And I will, of course,
I'll see you on the next video. Yeah.